Guys, today we got some epic details about Halo Infinite, including player customization, like Reach, split screen, coming back for player, new Vidox coming, beta news, playable elites, and how Halo Infinite may be an RPG game, and much more news to cover. Guys, it's gonna be awesome today, so sit down, get comfortable, and let's get into it. If you guys enjoy these Halo videos, then be sure to hit that like button. I really don't say thank you guys enough, so thank you so much for all the support and love over the past year, and I'm gonna be doing more giveaways, so keep a lookout on my community page. To start out, it was confirmed that 343 Industries will be treating PC players as full first class citizens, which basically is just fancy talk for saying that they will consider PC players as much as Xbox players. Chris Lee said, Halo 6 is being developed with PC in mind, and that will probably start with Alpha and Beta testing not on PC, but get to PC over time. We are working on building them both at the same time, but I think there's some kind of familiarity we have with consoles, so we'll start from there from a fighting perspective. In addition, it was confirmed that there will be four player split screen, whereas before we only knew of the split screen up to two players was returning, but now we know it's going to be four. So yeah, now you can finally play with all your friends on Halo Infinite. They will also be doing Vidox again, which if you don't know, are basically behind the scenes before Infinite releases, which is exciting. And honestly, we'll talk about it later, but I think we can expect some new Halo Infinite Vidox maybe in February, March, or April in 2019 next year. And here's what's really exciting about today's video, and that is Chris Lee, he admitted that fans that appreciated Halo Reach's customization, that they will also be very pleased with Halo Infinite's player customization. We're gonna talk a lot about that in a second, but it was also confirmed that the undersuits in Halo Infinite are purely black, whereas before, they weren't as much, and it just didn't look that great. And as discussed in the making of the Halo E3 Infinite trailer that we talked about last week, the helmet, which is a mix of classic Halo 2 and 3's design, as well as Halo 4 and 5, it has, since E3, in fact, has been changed and tweaked. And it's really likely now that people are going to like it more. All of this gets me really thrilled though about the customization in Halo Infinite, including the modifications and versions of Master Chief's helmet being available in multiplayer. And also because they've likely brought back a lot of the classic and nostalgic designs from the earlier games, as well as really epic new helmets that may have some nostalgic aesthetics added to them. But the whole range of colors and helmet customization to the shoulders, to the chest, the wrist, the utility, visor, knee guards, and so on, it really begs the question and to me at least, how is this all going to function? In Halo Reach, playing matches, getting completed missions, and other achievements in the game, you could earn CR, or credits, which you would use to unlock a variety of different helmets and modifications to those helmets. And I really like to see this system evolve to add skins for color customization, pattern designs, unlockable broken visors, multiple helmet attachments, and the return of the katana, of course, and things that are simply badass that make the player feel like it's really their Spartan, that if they were a Spartan, this is how they would dress themselves, and something that can really invest their time and effort into as a player. Also, I really appreciate the wrist attachments because whereas most customization in all the Halo games can't be seen unless you're being teabagged after you died or in theater, the wrist, you can actually physically see your custom attachment, which I always just deeply appreciate so much. It was also hinted that there would be some prize or some kind of gift to any of those few that hit rank 152 in Halo 5 Guardians, which is the highest rank you can achieve in the game. If I had to guess, the award would probably be some kind of legendary helmet, maybe a flaming helmet or some kind of Halo 5 cameo throwback. Let me know if you have any ideas as far as what the award should be for those people. And as we discussed a while ago, 343 is in fact building a pro team to refine Halo Infinite gameplay to tweak it and whatnot and to get active feedback, much like how Halo 5 had a pro team. It was confirmed that 343 Industries will be having a in-studio tournament in January 2019 or so on builds of Halo Infinite gameplay, which I think indirectly confirms a few things, such as the gameplay must be playable to a degree that would support a tournament, right? Which we're talking about the basic design of maps, 
weapons that are functioning and gameplay mechanics that could even host a tournament, right? Even if it's unofficial and very likely will not ever be broadcast to us, maybe in a vidoc a year from now, and will be only for the studio, I think that it still says a lot about how Halo Infinite must have playable gameplay right now. And I think that makes sense because they've been in development of this game for a few years now. They did say that the game would be using a flighting program which basically uses multiple versions of the game instead of a snapshot of what the game is at a certain point in time, such as a beta would do like in Halo 5. So a flooding program is going to be much more effective and it's going to give us an array of different versions and give us a variety of completely different outlooks and what it could actually end up being by the time the game comes out. It'll basically be like the Halo MCC Insider program, and it would start with a few individuals playing and then grow and grow and probably become a public thing like a public beta and eventually expand to PC. A picture was posted on December 12th on Halo's official Twitter saying, May your Halo Day season be infinitely awesome. The picture had Chief standing in the same spot as in the trailer, but the animals and smoke were gone, and the world is covered in snow, which made me wonder if there will be random snowstorms and weather effects and atmosphere effects in the game. Very likely so, I think. Then, very recently, a tweeter asked the franchise development director Frank O'Connor for news, in which he responded, The snow in our Xmas card of the E3 scene is temporary. The water will be varied. Natural landscapes will feature prominently. We know which ring it is. Exploration will be rewarded. So I don't really know what quite all that meant, but it did make me wonder a couple things such as, will we be able to cross frozen lakes? And how will exploration be rewarded? Making me once again think that this game will have some open world or RPG elements. Of course, there is a modest, if not a lot of evidence that supports that this game will be open world or have a lot of open world aspects to it and mechanics. But regardless, there is irrefutable proof that 343 wants the player to roam around great landscapes, exploring, looking, and discovering as an explorer, as they said in the making of. Next, we have a quote-unquote leak, or at least something that I figure 343 wouldn't want us to be talking about in the public airwaves, which we're about to do. The post is for a senior systems designer, which is clearly for Halo Infinite, and just by how they describe the listing, it's pretty obvious, right? What's intriguing about this is this part here, familiarity with RPG and shooter game mechanics. Now this certainly makes sense, especially when you put it in the context of how Halo Infinite needs to evolve, and plus, has this open world to explore in. I suspect the reason why they need a senior systems director with RPG experience is to integrate an upgrade system. For example, we will be able to drive faster as we rank up in the campaign, equip better Spartan armor, and better and faster abilities overall. And of course, maybe even better weapons or weapon modifications that well, whereas before would be exclusive to multiplayer, would now be a part of the campaign experience so we can, you know, work and build up our, you know, levels and whatnot in the campaign. During this stream, they unloaded some new details about the Slip Space engine, which is being used to create Halo Infinite, which actually this engine isn't all that new. In fact, many parts of it is taken from the Blam engine, the engine Bungie built and made with the other Halo games. All of the changes they made since E3 have expanded its capabilities, being more effective, easier to use, which I would say basically indirectly means that there will be more content, wider worlds, and basically more epic things that we can do and take advantage of on our Xbox and PCs and explore the magical world of Halo. So this is really epic news. It means that we will probably be receiving more content. During the 3 for 3 stream, it was also asked if playable elites would be returning to Halo Infinite as it was last week. And that was a big question. And they said, that question was outside the scope of what they were going to be answering today, but they appreciate our perseverance. So while there was no absolute yes or no if playable elites will be in Halo Infinite, I think it still leaves room for a yes later on. 
but considering on how much they've listened to us and now are implementing things in the next Halo game, such as the Reach customization, such as 4-player co-op and other things, I think there is a huge chance considering that's something that we've asked for ever since they were taken out way back in Halo Reach, I think they will be, if not in multiplayer, at least in custom games. One thing that I did feel was lacking in Halo Reach customization was for the elites and how there was little to no customization that we basically had these huge sets of armor and we really, oh, the only thing we could change about them was the color and I didn't really like that. So in Halo Infinite, I like to see the same level in depth as the Spartan customization or at least one fourth of it. Anything would be better than basically what we got in Halo Reach when it comes to armor pieces and selections and choices as, as far as what we and how we make our elite, right? And to wrap up all the news, Chris Lee said 2019 will be a big year for 343 and that they have a lot of work to do. So guys, what do you think of all this news? With the evolution and the new marketing that we've received from Halo Infinite and how we're getting more news as we are, I am starting to really believe that Halo Infinite is going to release in 2019. I believe that they are going to drop massive news during E3 in about six months from now. So guys, it's, it's not that far far away. Let me know your thoughts about everything that we uh, talked about today, all the news in the stream, such as player customization being the same as in Reach and now in Infinite, and the split screen four player co-op, new Vidox coming, beta news, playable elites, the RPG game elements, do you want Halo Infinite to have RPG elements in it or not? Tell me why or why not, guys. That will be it. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop it a like. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. And, you know, I haven't talked about it in a while, but we did reach half a million subscribers. And I am still working on the video to celebrate that. And it's turned out to be a much bigger thing than I originally planned. So, I am still working on it and I'm trying to give my thanks. But in the meantime, guys, thank you so much. Merry freaking Christmas. Have a blessed new year. And I will see you soon. Later.